Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to that one sports podcast, a podcast made by the fans for the fans. We want to hear from you guys, the fans. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wednesday live show. You can catch us on Apple Music, Spotify, and Amazon Music immediately following the show. Let's get in here, Seth. We got a packed show tonight. NFL content. I found some. Surprising. Not a whole lot going on. I had to dig. I dug and dug and dug. But. I think I, I think I got something that might be uh, worthwhile. So we'll see. We'll start off. We're going to start off with who needs to prove they are a franchise quarterback more this season? Tua Tungavailoa or Jalen Hurts? In, in my opinion, it's, it's got to be Tua. Uh, just based upon the fact that all the talent that is around Tua, I feel like if the Dolphins don't make the playoff again this year, it's solely because of quarterback play because you have the weapons, you have the defense. It's Tua's, it's Tua's time, you know. He, um, they went out and spent a lot of money for agency to protect Tua on the offensive side of the ball. The defense has been top 10 the, over the past couple of years, maybe even top five in some categories. It's, it's to his time. Uh, Jalen Hurts probably on a short leash as well, but they just went and got A.J. Brown. The defense is probably not going to be as good as the Dolphins' defense is. And they also don't have weapons. All right. Good points. I personally, I've, I think it's got to be Jalen Hurts. Right. OU guy, Alabama guy, came in as a second-round pick. Two is the number five overall pick. Number six overall pick. Whatever pick he is, he's a high overall. In my mind, you draft a guy that high, that's your franchise guy. Jalen Hurts, it, they seem to be on the quarterback market every offseason with this guy. Jalen Hurts has a lot to prove. He's got A.J. Brown. He's now got Devontae. They got a running back that needs needs help, right? Miles Sanders, they got to feed him the ball. I don't know if it's Sirianni not feeding him the ball, what the case is. That defense is good. Like, I agree with you. It's not going to be as good as Miami's. And I think that's going to bolster Tua a lot. Right? With Tua, there's limitations. With Jalen Hurts, throwing the deep ball is his limitation. But Jalen Hurts, medium range, short range, running the ball, getting down the goal line, and then being in a not-so-great division, like the only the only team in the division worth a damn is the Dallas Cowboys. So Jalen Hurts has the opportunity to win more football games than – to a tongue of Iloa does. Yeah, but you could put the blame somewhere else with the Eagles. You could say, oh, the defense isn't performing up to standard. Our running game sucks. The running game will not suck now that McDaniels is in Miami. You have the weapons to throw the ball offensively, and the defense is going to get you the ball back in prime field position a lot of these games. So if Tua underperforms, it's solely on Tua. Now, if you look on the Eagles and they deal in Hurts, it's not all on him if he goes sometimes without getting the ball for a long time in the quarter because his defense can't get a stop together, or if it's just A.J. Brown and the practice squad out there trying to catch the football. Miles Sanders was not very productive last year. I don't think the dude scored a touchdown. I think it's more on, personally, I think it's on two. And Barrett's in the comments, and he uh, he's putting the pressure on his own QB here, Miami Dolphins fan. See, Miles Sanders not scoring, getting the ball in the red zone last year doesn't seem like that's a him issue. That seems like a play caller issue in Nick Sirianni. I think they were trying to they were trying to boost Jalen Hurts, if you know what I mean. Like get him the ball, get him the touches, get him the touchdowns. That way, I think Sirianni wants to roll with Jalen Hurts, and he's trying to convince the GM, who is constantly looking for to upgrade that quarterback position, he's trying to convince Jalen Hurts can be that guy. And I, I think Jalen Hurts can be that guy. I think Tua can also be that guy. But when it comes to this year, Jalen Hurts being the second round overall pick in a division that is, I'm, I'm going to say it, the division's up for grabs in that division. Cowboys are very good. Eagles are very good. Commanders have crazy potential. I'm not saying they're going to do a damn, but they have crazy potential. <laughs> and then the Giants, you know, if you guys lose to the Giants, if anyone loses to the Giants in that division, clown. But I think Jalen Hurts has a lot more to prove than Tua. All right. This this one's a good one. This next one. Just absolutely wrecking me the second time around. Yeah, Barrett. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Barrett is out. 
with the COVID. So he'll be back next week, hopefully, as long as round two doesn't just, as he quoted, absolutely wrecking me the second time around. Is it true Daniel Jones signed with pro cornhole? Fuck. The dude is the most inaccurate quarterback I've ever seen. I doubt they let him throw a cornhole bag. <laughs> he might be one hell of a tosser. You don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not putting my money on a Daniel Jones cornhole team. I'll tell you that. All right, Seth. Who needs to have the better season with a new team? Russell Wilson or Matt Ryan? I think this is this is Matt Ryan right here, right? Uh, Russell Wilson, Super Bowl winning quarterback. You know he's going to be good in Denver. He comes in. He's not. I wouldn't say in the back leg of his career. I think he's, uh, you know, three quarters there. He's still got a little prime left in him. But Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan is on that end stage of his career. He goes into a new system where they really need a consistent quarterback play, where they have a really good defense. They have some weapons. They have the best running back in the league. So, I mean, you come from Atlanta where you choked a 28-3 lead. So, the whole city of Indianapolis is kind of counting on you here. I don't think the Broncos are really rushing Russell Wilson to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. But they are very happy to have him. I thought you were going to go the other way and go Russell Wilson, but because I, I was on the Matt Ryan home train here. I, I think it has to be Matt Ryan, and it's literally just reiterate every point you said. Best running back, great defense. They, the only question that I have for the Colts is right tackle. or no, it's, left, it's left tackle because they have right with the right tackle. Left tackle and wide receivers. They're, they still haven't re-signed T.Y. Hilton. Michael Pittman, is he the guy? Is Zach Pascal? The dude that seems to go off for like a good three, four game stretch and then just falls asleep. So we'll, we'll see. I think, but Russell Wilson has to turn it around, right? You're obviously following the expectations of, of a Peyton Manning because there hasn't there hasn't been anybody since Peyton Manning. So you're, following, you're following Peyton Manning's expectations where that dude set record breaking offense in Denver. And Russ has to live up to that. He's got almost the exact same thing that Peyton Manning had, right? Minus the edge rush. That's the, he's got young wide receivers that are trying to prove themselves. Demarius Thomas, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. Comparison right there. Eric Decker, kind of the, the older veteran guy that would be Cortland Sutton, in my opinion, right there. So Jerry Judy. Cortland like four. Eric Decker was only like. 25, 26, when Manning was there. And then off the, they just got the, the, uh, the tight end they drafted. They lost Noah Fant, which I thought Noah Fant was going to be a huge part of that offense. And so it is what it's going to be. Let's let's read some of the comments here. <laughs> Russell Wilson, Brian is done and just needs to pack it up, Nicholas Lamb says. Ryan will win that shit, shit division. <laughs> Titans Broncos country. Hey, Bill. Poor Bill. That's right. Uh, a lot of Broncos. Russ is going to have a time. I don't know, man. I think, I think Russ is very underrated in this league. I don't, I don't rank him as high as, like, some people do. Like, Colin Cowherd certainly does. Like, he's he's one of Cowherd's, like, top four guys. Russ a category for me, but. Yeah, but that clown probably thinks that Sam Donald's still top five. He thinks Sam Donald's going to start over Baker. <laughs> That's absolute fine time. Speaking of Baker Mayfield, we roll into which quarterback will have the better redemption story on the new team, Baker Mayfield or Carson Wentz? Start us off here. All right. I personally think I like – don't get me wrong. I like me some bake, bake, money, make here, but I think it's got to be Carson Wentz. Baker Mayfield has proven that he can take his team to the playoffs. When Carson Wentz led his team to the best record in the NFC, where was he in the playoffs? Hurt. We've seen Baker in the playoffs. You know who we haven't seen in the playoffs? Carson Wentz. I think Carson has to have the better redemption year 
because this is make or break for him. This is gonna. This is the year that determines if Carson Wentz is gonna be the backup for the rest of his career or a starter going forward. Where Baker Mayfield, jury's still out. Right? They're getting ready to. They're getting ready to put the hammer on Carson Wentz if he doesn't perform this year. This is the last year of his contract. If he doesn't perform, he's a backup for the rest of his career. See, I gotta go Baker because I think Carson Wentz is what he is, and that's a fringe starter. Uh, too many injuries play in the guy's career. I obviously I don't like Carson Wentz. I've never seen him as a great quarterback. This what it is, what it is. But Baker Mayfield, the Browns almost screwing him right here on a big turning point. A lot of quarterbacks' careers. I mean, year five. This is where you earn your your money right here. You know, you have a big four to five year extension. Your two hundred fifty million dollars. And he kind of got screwed over with the whole Brown situation. No team wanted him. Every saw was full by the time Baker came around. So here he is. He's on a new team. If he competes and gets QB1, gets Carolina, past the Saints, past the Bucks, into the playoffs, he's going to earn himself a paycheck. And that and that's a big, big win and a big redemption for Baker's career. Absolutely. Because he's kind of getting counted out by most of the NFL at this point and the fans, by everybody. But if he takes takes over a young Carolina team to the playoffs, possibly, that's huge for Baker's career. Uh, Baker, both these quarterbacks, Carson Wentz has already secured the bag, right? Everyone thought he was going to return to MVP form. Baker Mayfield still looking to secure the bag. He has to have a phenomenal year. Carson Wentz also has to have a phenomenal year. It's this one was a toss up for me. I, I really, I really thought about it. I was like, man, I gotta go Baker. And I was like, I hate to say it, but I love Carson Wentz. I think he has potential. Oh, God. I, I hate the way this dude plays, but man, that year where he was leading the Eagles, leading the league in touchdowns after week 13, and the only person to beat him was Russell Wilson. Carson Wentz finished second in the league that year with passing touchdowns. Only person to beat him was Russell Wilson, and he had to go absolutely ballistic at the end of the year to do it. I think Carson has a lot of potential in this league. He, he can do it. He has to do great it. Great game. Blake Boyle's had a great season, too. Baker has to have a great season. Baker has proven himself in the playoffs. I mean, he was a fourth and two away from being in the AFC Championship, beating, knocking out the Chiefs. And if it wasn't for old Chase Daniels just getting buck wild out here, I mean, we're looking at a different situation. We're looking at Baker Mayfield getting $250 million guaranteed instead of Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Who was the clown down in the Texans who – who was he with the uh, – with the Broncos? <sighs> Got a big contract when he came over Peyton. Went to the – Brock Osweiler had a great season, Vance. Doesn't mean he's a great quarterback. I wouldn't even – I wouldn't even say he had a great season. I mean, he had that seven or eight game stretch right there where he was like lighting it up. Yeah. I don't know. That guy I, never, I never was a believer in Brock Osweiler. He's one of the guys that immediately he he was a good backup quarterback, right? Brock Osweiler's a really intelligent person. He's just a shitty football player. He had he had a good stretch around a historic historic defense with a historic offense. And he was behind a declining Peyton Manning. He got put in the most beautiful situation. And when he went to the Texans, he got exposed. That's true. All right. Yeah, I think he was, Barry. Yeah. All right, Barry, I got a good one for you. Which wide receiver has more to prove this year after securing the two biggest contracts by wide receivers in NFL history? Devonte Adams or Tyreek Hill, both on new rosters, both with new quarterbacks. Mm. That's a that's a kind of a tough one. Uh, both great come from great quarterbacks. Both come from good air raid systems. Who has more? To pre- uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Tyreek on this one, just because Devonte going into Vegas. Not, I don't think it's as much pressure, right? You go to Derek Carr is a solidified quarterback in this league, so you expect him to do great things. But everybody, the big question is, is what will Tyreek do in Miami? And 
a lot of fans have been hating on Tyreek down in Miami because he believed to uh So when he turns around, he said he's keeping the receipts. So if Tyreek comes around, gets Miami to the playoffs, maybe a little further, makes Tua look good. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be Tyreek, one hundred percent. Yep, Tyreek has been gassing up Tua, and I mean if if you're joining a new squad with a quarterback that has a lot to prove. That is getting hated on by his own fans, his own his own Twitter, basically. Fans either hate or love Tua, right? Dolphin fans in particular. If you're an outside guy, it's either, hey, you like Tua or Jerry's still out. I, I don't know anybody outside of Miami that hates Tua besides Chris Sims. <laughs> but, I don't know. We'll see. But a wide receiver that has the most to prove, to me, it has... To me, it has to be Devontae Adams. He was in the most perfect situation for his career to win a championship. Aaron Rodgers chokes in the playoffs. That's unfortunate for him. But Aaron Rodgers is leaps and bounds better than Derek Carr. Leaps and bounds. Two-time MVP, four-time total MVP, Super Bowl champion. Devontae caught his first touchdown from Aaron Rodgers. Tyreek played. He's been in the league for a while. He, he's played with a couple guys. Devontae's been in the league for a while. He's played with one quarterback his whole career. He switches teams to secure a bag, even though the Packers were willing to match. So that's telling me that Devontae doesn't believe in Green Bay. Tyreek knew that he could win with the Chiefs. Like, there was, there was no doubting that. Patrick Mahomes is going to be the AFC Championship for years to come, years to come. He's going to be the, the most annoying player since Tom Brady to be an AFC championship. But if you're Devontae Adams and you leave the perfect situation for your career where you're averaging 1,500 yards a season and 15 touchdowns a season and you go play with Derek Carr because he's your college roommate, I, I think you got more to prove than Tyreek. We all know Tyreek is absolutely phenomenal and he's very fast. And as long I think it's more on Tua than it is Tyreek. But this year... It's on Devontae over Tyree. You can't leave Aaron Rodgers and go play for Derek Carr and expect to put up the same numbers. And Derek Carr slings the fucking rock. He put up 4,800 yards passing last year. But he only, yeah, had, but... he only had like 28 TDs where Rodgers is putting up 40 a year. It's like, pick your poison. I mean, it's, I don't know. Hunter Renfro, he's got a better wide receiver situation because Devontae Adams has double teamed quite, quite often last year. Where Tyreek just had an overhang safety, where Devontae was literally too stacked on one side of the field. So we'll, mm. we'll see how that one goes. I, I like I like Devontae in that situation. All right, here's a fantastic one. Which running back will return to former glory? Saquon Barkley or Christian McCaffrey? You spell Saquon right. I hope it might be SA. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's SA there, homie. <laughs> but Saquon, um, I think the obvious answer is going to be CMC. Uh, better situation. You got a quarterback coming in that you know you could you could trust in Baker, in my opinion. Uh, with Barkley, it's just a lot of unknowns. How's the offensive line? What's Dana Jones look like? Are you going to get wide receiver help? What's your defense look like? Uh, your, your situation is not as good as CMC's is. So if he comes back healthy, CMC will – he's going to come back and turn the league just like he was his rookie and sophomore year, you know, being a receiving threat as well as a running threat. So I think it's CMC 100% if health holds up. Obviously, that's a concern for both of them. Uh, Barkley not being able to really put together a great season past that rookie year, right? I mean, he was he's been in and out with injuries. Yeah, he's been hurt. And CMC the past couple of years, we just haven't seen him fully fully go. The first couple of games that we saw him last year, he was electric once again, and then he got shut down. It was he was in and out, in and out, and you just hope to see. You just hope that. Both of them come back, but if you want to see one come back sooner rather than later, I think it's CMC. I th- I kind of worded this question wrong. 
who will come back to former glory is going to be obviously Christian McCaffrey. But who who needs to come back to former glory is Saquon Barkley. So I, I definitely worded the question wrong because CMC will. The minute he steps on the field, Christian McCaffrey is the most electrifying player since Patrick Mahomes and Alvin Kamara steps on a field. Those, when I think of the most three electrifying players on a field, it's Mahomes, Kamara, CMC. Next year, you're biased. Guys, how, name another three. Well, Mahomes, Josh Allen, CMC, uh, Justin Jefferson, Tyree Hill. I mean, oh, Justin Jefferson's you know. a one-trick pony, dude. Come on. That guy is really, really good at football, he man. Very, he is very, very good, but he's a one-trick pony. I mean, Herbert, all these young I, guys, if Lamar. I four, if I was six foot two and ran a four three, I'd be running post routes and streaks all day, and hopefully, Kirk Cousins can me on the money. You gotta remember, Alan Kamara put up six touchdowns just like two years. I think ago. I froze. Oh, you're good. No. Oh. Well, I got my little my little uh, exclamation point up here on the stream. So if I crash, just let me know. Nick said, "Last time Kamara stepped off the field, he stepped into a cell." <laughs> the New Orleans Saints inmates. Man, I don't know. I don't know. CMC is the obvious choice to return to former glory. I he just he's getting he's got way better quarterback play. Even if Sam Darnold winds up being the starter. Sam Darnold's still better than Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, to me, is the th- out of the 32 quarterbacks in the league, he's number 32. He is yeah, the- but so if you want to phrase your question the way you're phrasing it, my question to you is, does Barkley, this is fifth year Barkley, same draft class as Baker, does Barkley get the bag like all these other big running backs? I, I think if Barkley can put up a thousand, just... just just a measly thousand yards. Like if he improves from what he was last year, right? Because last year he only had like seven, eight hundred yards. He was still kind of coming back from the injury. If if he can fully return this year, or not even fully return, eighty five percent Barkley, and we get a thousand yards out of him rushing and maybe five hundred receiving, I think they pay Barkley on the upside that he comes back to former glory. And I think he gets a bag too. I think he gets more than Zeke money. I wouldn't pay Barkley more than Zeke. I wouldn't pay any running back more than Zeke. Uh, the one thing that you have to learn about the NFL is that running backs are a dime a dozen. They are. But GMs have a hard time passing on stars. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah, if I was. I, I agree. You could walk away from Barkley, and then two years later, it's like, boom, next running back's right in your fucking lap. But yeah, you can let Barkley go. He could be a star somewhere else, or he could go be the injury prone himself that he is right now until they prove it otherwise. And you can save yourself hundred million dollars. You can go get a rope and rush for four to five years. And it, is it right that they don't get their money? No, but that's your position, and that's just what it is nowadays. If I'm if I'm an NFL running back, the way the way shit goes down, right? CMC gets paid, instantly gets hurt. Right? All these other guys get get big contracts. Derrick Henry, he's gonna get a mass. He's gonna get a massive contract. He's gonna get the biggest running back contract in NFL history. He just is, and I think it's coming next year. Is his extension timeline? He's gonna get a huge contract at like the age of twenty eight or twenty nine. Just because the way his body's built, he can last forever. Saquon, he has a really good body. He's already proven to be injury prone. This is Derrick Henry's like first injury that we've we known of because he's kind of been irrelevant the first three years of his career, and then he just popped up out of nowhere, showed up. Saquon's already been hurt. I'm I'm not paying him. I don't I don't want to. I would I would if I was Saquon I'd gladly take franchise tags. You know he's getting the fifth year option this year. He's already being paid as a good running back. Take my franchise tag next year. Take my franchise tag the year after that. Unless I pop off two years in a row, and then I'll request a bag. But it's like, if you're already being injured at 24 years old, where you're sidelined almost two full seasons, take take your fifth-year option, guaranteed money. 
take your franchise tag, guaranteed money, take your other franchise tag, guaranteed money, and see where you are from there. Because you'll be 26, 27 by the time his second franchise tag is up. So, I mean, that's you can take a three-year, $50 million deal from any team at yeah, a 27-year-old running back, especially if you ball out for three straight years. But I'm not, I'm not paying him. Too injury prone. Like CMC, I, I would have paid CMC at the time. Yeah, definitely. And then same, same for Zeke. I would have paid Zeke at the time too. I probably wouldn't pay Zeke the money that he was asking for, like five years, 90 mil, 90 million. I think is what it was. I probably wouldn't pay Zeke that. That's seventeen million dollars a year for a running back. But luckily, you guys are cashing out with Pollard. So you're basically paying Zeke to pay for two running backs. So your running back core is not bad with Zeke's contract. I I probably would have paid Zeke at the time. Yeah, but that's a lot of money. It is a for lot running back. At the time, I mean CMC got way way more money than Zeke got. He does more. Hundred, hundred, yeah, way more. Well, that year the Zeke, the year before Zeke got paid, he was catching wheel routes out of the background one handed with the dude drooping on his back. <laughs> I thought Zeke was going to be the next big thing in this league when he was doing shit like that. He's still like, he's not, he's not that, everybody's kind of down on him, but he still gets his stats. I mean, he's still like a thousand yard rusher every year, but he just, you know, he's not what he was as rookie and sophomore year, so he kind of gets looked down on for that, you know. Yeah. All right, here's an, another good one for you. Here's that. Which year two quarterback will have the breakout season. That bad man and Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> or Mac Jones. Where's that dog, team? Zach Wilson, huh? Uh, I want to say Zach Wilson, but I think this has to be the sophomore return of Lawrence being, being the number one pick, right? I mean, he went down... Threw a shitload of interceptions. Did not look great on most days. I mean, he did beat the Miami Dolphins in London. Rip, Bear, or Trammell. But, uh, yeah, it's got to be Trevor Lawrence. Number one pick, you're in a not-so-great football town in Jacksonville. It's just, you got to be the one to turn it around, or it's a franchise that will be probably going to turn on you pretty soon, in my opinion. Um, Zach Wilson's going to get the publicity from this weekend so he's the dog right now zach wilson is a favorite amongst nfl fans and uh, i'm assuming players so he's all right probably for the next couple years based on that shit alone yeah uh, <laughs> the jets is going wild today the, the jets uh are doing a good job of putting pieces around zach um it's definitely trevor lawrence in my eyes i just don't think mac jones made the playoff like you know yeah did he Barrett, did Zach? I don't know. I don't know. Barrett, Barrett will tell us. Did Mac make the playoffs? But he's Max loved by Patriots fans, so he doesn't have a whole lot of pressure. There's nowhere he's going. Uh, Justin Fields, he's on a dog shit team. Wouldn't expect him to do great. So it's just, it's just a Zach Wilson or Trevor Lawrence, in my opinion. So, and I think it's got to be Trevor Lawrence being the number one guy in a not so good football town. I, d I didn't put Justin Fields or Davis Mills or uh, Trey Lance on this list because I think they are in the three worst situations they could possibly be in where they have almost no chance to succeed. Where Trey Lance, he, he can succeed if he's good, but Jimmy G still being there tells us he's not good. Or they would have shipped Jimmy G out for a fucking half-eaten bologna sandwich like you say. <laughs> so... I wouldn't give. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't give him a half fucking bologna sandwich for a fucking shitty Jimmy G. <laughs> Maybe a quarter bologna sandwich. Who knows? I, I think it's got to be Zach Wilson. They put the pieces around him. He's got wide receiver talent. He's got running back talent now. He's got a rebuilding O line. He's got an. He's the defense for the Jets is okay. It's still. It's almost there. there. In my it's opinion, it's almost there. A couple of years ago, they made a huge splash and signed so many players and just got, unfortunate, riddled with injuries. 
And a lot of those players are still on that roster coming back. Avery Williamson, CJ Mosley, those guys are still on that roster. So they have a lot, a, a ton of potential. And they just got a cornerback. Sauce. Dude, yeah, Sauce. That dude's going to be a star. I don't. He. You come out of college with a nickname Sauce already. It's like you're, you're, you're destined to be a star, in my opinion. But is he going to be like Revis Island? I don't think so. I don't think we'll ever see that recreated. Well, Trayvon Diggs plays, but you know. Yeah, I don't know about Trayvon. <laughs> I like, I, I wanted to say Trevor Lawrence here because he, in my opinion, is in a almost do or die situation already. They just spent a lot of money, uh, the most money in free agency this year to build around that guy. He has to put it together. Yeah, but go to the Jets. Go to the Jags. Or what are we talking about? The Jet. Yeah, the Jags spent a ton of money. Oh, that said Jets. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The both teams spend a lot of money. It's definitely hard to figure out. Do you see three or more rookie quarterbacks starting this season? No. No. The only one I see. We may not even see one. Yeah, it's it may be Kenny Pickett if Trubisky sucks. And I don't think Trubisky sucks. I think he's in a fantastic offensive situation for himself. And I honestly think the Steelers are going to ride Trubisky and move off Kenny Pickett in two years. Mm, I don't know about that. The, the fans may go crazy, but yeah. Trubisky is, I think, definitely gets the day one nod, being the veteran, being the guy Tomlin went and got. Uh, you're not going to see a Matt Corral, a Desmond Ritter, a uh, – who's the other one? Malik Willis, you're not going to see these guys start day one. You may not even see a rookie start all season long if Trubisky holds up because he's the only guy that has a chance to lose his job to a rookie. Yep. So. yep. I, don't, I don't think we see it. Like I said, it, Trubisky has to suck for Pickett to get in, right? Ryan Tannehill <laughs> is a great system quarterback. Unless the Titans just absolutely fall off the face of the NFL map, Go from the number one seed to the bottom seed in that division. Maybe we see Malik step on the field. Matt Corral's definitely not seeing the field this year, I don't think. Not with Baker and Sam Darnold right above him. I mean, he's what, a third, fourth overall pick. Desmond Ritter. I don't know. Quarterback. No, that was trash. I, I, I don't know. I. He played nobody in college, and when he did, they got the stomped. Well, it's just the Falcons are bad, so they're going to pay Mario as long as Mario is healthy. He's probably going to be on the field. And I don't I see them. I don't, I don't see them running Ritter out to get injured in his rookie year if they don't need to, knowing they're going to be bad. They have a horrible offensive line. Like, ain't no. Tri- Mariota signed in the worst situation. He should have been showing up to to the Steelers camp, trying to like <laughs> get boot Trubisky out of there. <laughs> Whatever. All right, set so the last topic for the NFL. Which OU quarterback will have the best season this year? You got Kyler Murray with the Cardinals, Jalen Hurts with the Eagles, Baker now with Carolina. Who's looking like they are primed to have the best? I misspelled Kyler. Let me fix that. They are primed to have their best season yet. Remember, Kyler had a fantastic season, and then he fell off. Dude, and Jalen Hurts was coming alive who's, at the end of the season. Who's primed to have a better season? It's Kyler Murray. Playing for money. Uh, he doesn't have D-Hop for six games, but he still got things. The defense is, is coming. I think, you know, it, it was a great Ooh, Seth Freeze is right there. And, oh, oh, his internet just came back. There he is. There he is. All right, I didn't. I didn't leave. I came on back. Am I good? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Start, just start, from the top. start from the top. It's random. It shows that I got good bars over here, folks, and it just, it just it freezes me. It look, it's green all the way. I don't know what happens, okay? But anyway, it's Kyler. I don't know, you know. Jalen still in. 
Baker. Baker though too. I think it's I think it's Kyle Baker and then uh, Jalen. Yeah, I look Kyler Murray. I thought last year was his peak. Right, the dude is an MVP candidate after nine games. Everyone thought the Cardinals were going to finish the season like a three-loss team. They ended up squeaking in the playoffs in a wild card. I think it has. To, I think it has to be Jalen Hurts. I, I'm on. I don't know why I'm on a Jalen Hurts kick this year, but Jalen Hurts and De- and Derek Carr to me are just like two quarterbacks that are going to go absolutely ballistic this year. I think. Will they compete with like the uh, the Bills Mafia and uh, Josh Allen, or will they compete with the Mahomeses? No, maybe Derek Carr can now that he's got Devontae. Maybe he can stack a wide receiver and get an additional seventeen touchdowns. I don't know, but Jalen Hurts out of out of the three OU quarterbacks starting in this league, I think has to have the bigger season. I think he has the highest ex- the most expectations on him this year because if he doesn't perform, he's gone. Kyler. If he has a decent year, he's re-signed. Baker, if he has a good year, decent year, he's re-signed. If Jalen Hurts doesn't have an absolute breakout year and lead the Eagles to the playoffs, he's backup quarterback forever like Carson Wentz. I see that. He might get one more chance, then. I like that. Russ, if if they trade him. First off, Cody Turner, Sub-Zero is the best character. Okay. And then Barrett, Josh Allen's not having a, a down year. That dude's a dog. You might as well get ready to see Miami getting the shit kicked down by the Bills constantly because Josh Allen is that guy. Yeah. Josh Allen is an absolute stud. He is currently the favorite to win MVP this year. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Sorry about it. Sorry about it. Sub-Zero is the second best character in Mortal Kombat. There you go. Yeah, see Kelly Turner? Clan. Behind Scorpion. Scorpion's number one. There, there. I love the optimism, but I mean, how many times did you guys beat the Bills last year? Right. I mean, if there's. They're, if they're on a realistic scale here, <laughs> how many wins do you see Miami getting in their own division? I mean, the point spread for a Miami game last year was like minus 28. For the for the Bills, and they would have covered both times, I think. So it's like <laughs> I, see, I see Miami getting swept by the Bills. I can see them splitting a series five and one. You clown! Come on! Come on, Jared! I could I could easily that's a division see record five and one five and one division record for the Dolphins. Look, they're zero and two against the Bills. One and one. One and one against the Jets. And one and one against the Pats. Oh, you give them that two and four? Two and four in their own division. Oh, man. Yeah. Who is undefeated versus the Pats? They're going to have to win a lot of out of division games to make the playoffs. (laughs) Man, two is undefeated versus the Pats. That's rude, man. I I don't think it's going to continue. I I think Mac Jones puts the Miami Dolphins. In their place, huh? Yeah, dude. Mac Jones, I think, potentially could be like. <laughs> he's, he's very good. Oof. Freezing cold. They're games, eating this up. Cake. There, I just, I just don't see it, man. I like Miami, but they had a disappointing <laughs> year last year. Didn't make the playoffs the year before. Now, last year was solely on Jason Sanders' leg. He was an absolute turd last year. <laughs> he did. He didn't get one goat message from Barrett. So Jason Sanders ruined y'all's year last year. Hey, Jason this Sanders missed two field goals to win two games, man. This year, look, I pride Mick or Mike Daniels <laughs> loading down on running back. They have four bona fide starter starting running backs in this league on that roster. Not bona fide, but starters. Right? Chase, Chase Edmonds was a starter. Miles Gaskin is a starter. Raheem Mostert was a starter. Miles or a uh, uh, running back from the Rams that just got there. Sony Michelle. Sony Michelle was a starter. 
are two different teams. <laughs> they are loaded at running back. They are prepared for injuries. And this is what Mike Daniels does. He did it with uh, San Fran, too. He loaded up on running back in San Fran. So we'll see. We'll see. Can't right. wait for the season. Can't wait for the season. Season is close. Let me tune into. 57 days, still football. <laughs> I had to well, okay. We're going to get some preseason in. That's the, uh, that's, the, that's the official kickoff for week one. So we still get we get preseason next month. Nice. Training camp's coming up too. So that'll be exciting to see who participates in all that and gets, uh, gets ready for the season. Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold communicating with each other to get their receivers out and about so they can throw. Baker's interview with uh, whoever I can't remember who did the interview with it was very good. I watched the whole thing; it was a pretty pretty good interview. He said there's no awkwardness between him and Sam, but I know the minute they start competing and one of them loses out on the job, it's going to be fucking awkward. I mean, yeah, you lose your no way. Number one and number three in the same draft class come onto the same team. And then just like don't try to fight for a position, and then whoever loses get tries to get out. Ain't no way. Yeah, it is. But I don't know. All right, moving on to the NBA. Seth, why hasn't Kevin Durant been traded yet? Big asking price. I mean, what are the net? So. Teams like the Jazz, who just got a boatload of picks and players for Rudy Gobert, right? A couple other guys got traded this season for high. Malcolm Brogdon got sent for, like, eight players and a couple firsts. One first. One first. And then, but the Rudy Gobert trade, like, Kevin Durant is is on a totally different world than Rudy Gobert. And right, that, all that, that trade right there is kind of like driving the market. For Kevin Durant, you would say, you could say, how can Rodrigo Gobert demand four first round picks with pick swaps and five players, but the Nets want four, like four first round picks and a star, a young star. So the, the, the Jazz didn't get no young star back. I mean, Jared Vanderbilt's okay coming from the Timberwolves. They got Kessler, the 22nd overall pick in the draft. So jury's out. Yeah, you know, that guy, maybe. It's, it's basically five first round picks for a guy like that. But, Katie, what what drives a team to trade for a guy like that? Like, Rudy Gobert probably didn't act. He may have, but it never came out there for the trade. Kevin Durant comes in for the Nets, gets nursed by the Nets, plays, what, two seasons? Was it one season, basically? Two seasons? It was, a, it was like a total of, it, wasn't, it was combined just over a season. But he, yeah. he was with the Nets for three, year, three years. So, his second season is a, a toe on the line from, you know, moving on to possibly the finals, and the next season gets swept, and he's already out, already ready to leave. He's already ready to go. So what's your what's your guarantee that says, oh, if Kevin Durant gets traded, if I give up five first-round picks and a player for KD, how many years do I actually get out of him? I mean, he's under a four-year contract, but is he going to stay for one? Is he going to refuse to play after complaining for one? You know, it's, it's a risky business. There's only a few select teams that I could see trading for Kevin Durant. The Nets, the Nets are getting, they're fielding offers, but they're like, we'll give you two first rounders and a decent player for Kevin Durant. Because like you said, we don't know if Kevin Durant's going to show up on this roster have an amazing year and then year two have a down year and then be like, give me the fuck out of town. Like I can't, I can't deal with this. I'm a snake. I'm a cupcake. Give me out of town. Put me on a different roster. Number one seed in this division. Let me go play for them. I just, I can't picture a contender right now. Like looking through the contenders, Phoenix suns, they said they're in a weird trade and sign for Aiden right now to send him to the Pacers. If that goes through, have to see what's going on there. That's, that was kind of weird to see. I don't know why they'd get rid of DeAndre Ayton for Miles Turner. I imagine that's what they'll get back in return. 
Mm -hmm. But the Heat, maybe they got young stars. They got picks. Maybe. But I don't, I don't think they need it. The Bucks definitely don't need it. He doesn't want to play for them anyways. Who else? The Heat definitely need Andre, in my opinion. They got to get over the hump. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Butler's doing all he can for that team. I mean, they got other contributors in other places. But they need a guy that is going to get them over in their Eastern Conference Finals because Jimmy Butler's doing it all when it comes to that point. And Bam's Bam. But, I mean, if you take Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, and two three first-round picks and get Kevin Durant, it's a win. Because you need a guy that can score you would alongside... Include, you would include Kyle Lowry in that trade? Absolutely. You have to almost for the salary match. Yeah. I get, yeah, you're right. Kyle Lowry, I don't see the hype ever with Kyle Lowry. He's had his clutch moments. He's had his big-time uh, thing in Toronto. But he was a choke artist this year in the playoffs for the Heat. Uh, he's a choke artist that one year for the Raptors. Luckily, Kawhi was there to help him get out of it. But... Yeah, Kyle Lowry. I don't. I don't, I don't see Kyle Lowry as a franchise point guard. Is a is a bad trade. I like Tyler Hero. He's Nate. also thirty five years old, thirty six years old. I like Hero, but you're gonna have to give him up to get KD. I mean, Vance. Vance loves Hero. I like I Hero. Like I, don't... Hero. I wouldn't give. If you're Miami, I, I I agree with what you're saying. Now that I hear it, I agree with what you're saying. They need Kevin Durant to get over the hump. And Tyler Hero is unfortunately one of those guys that has to go. I think maybe even Duncan Robinson is one of those guys that has to go. Kyle Lowry would have to eat. Yeah, you'd have to salary match him. Maybe Miami is a destination. I didn't want to think it, but it makes the most sense. Them, at, them or Chicago. This is a Pat Riley big move, right? He got LeBron, he got Wade, he got Chris Bosh. So you have Jimmy Butler, who's... And he's had Shaq. Yeah, you got D-Wade and Shaq. I mean, so you got you got Jimmy Butler, who is backpacking this team through the regular season, is backpacking this team to the playoffs, and you get the Eastern Conference Finals, not once, but twice, even got to the Finals, and you couldn't do it. Because you didn't have that electric, can get to the rim can shoot the three guy like Kevin Durant. If you go get KD, you pair him with the defensive demon, Jimmy Butler, who can also get a bucket. I think they win the finals with Bam down low. If if Miami can keep Tyler Hero, that's a huge, huge W. But if you're the Nets... You almost demand Tyler Hero. Yeah, if, if you're the Nets, you demand Tyler, Tyler Hero. And the Miami, he would give him up. Look, I love Tyler Hero spent big game. We love Hero coming out of the draft, especially you. But Tyler, there's a reason Tyler Hero is a six man, and that's because he's a great offensive guy, but he plays defense like a wooden plank. Okay, so you have to put a guy in there that is a little bit two way, and then you bring a Tyler Hero off the bench to score while you know the reserves are in. Tyler Hero's year one, he played the fuck out of defense, and now going into year two and three here, he's kind of falling off on defense. Tyler Hero was very good year one on defense, and now now he's just he's like, hey, this is a shooter's league. I gotta I gotta shoot. It's like I don't need to be wearing my stuff out on defense, kind of like a lot of these other stars do. Yeah, but he's got to go. If you're the Heat or if you're the Nets, you demand Hero. You have to take Lowry. Yeah. Katie, right. Katie, the Heat. You heard it here. That's where he's going. All right. Here's one more thing I got for you. Chet Holgram getting bullied in the paint by Kenny Lofton from the Grizzlies. Now, Kenny Lofton's a big guy, right? He's a he's a bigger player. He's only like 6'9", but he's a beefy guy. Is there yeah. anything to be worried about with Chet getting bullied in the paint by the Rockets and the Grizzlies in the playoff or in the summer league? Uh, no, no. Every every team everybody is like oh he's gonna get bodied by the Giannis and the Joel Embiid. He almost averaged thirty points a game last year. Okay, yes he's gonna bully Chet. 
Yes, he's going to bully the 28 other centers in the NBA. Mr. Drive and Dunk, Giannis Antetokounmpo himself. Yes, he will bully him. Yes, he will go into the paint and flop and get the foul. Yes, he will. No, there's no doubt it. But Chet was blocking shots. He was playing good defense. And he's an offensive threat. Let the guy develop. Let him get some weight. He'll be just fine. He's fine how he is. What he average? Or what, how many blocks did he have in the summer league? Like I ran into some. He averaged three point seven blocks in the summer league. Three point three seven blocks. If he averaged three point seven blocks in the NBA, he'd be a fucking defensive player of the year. Oh, yeah, defensive player of the year, absolutely. So you give and you get. Yeah, she's gonna get bullied by the big name stars, but everybody gets bullied by the big name stars. You know, he 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 works hard on defense. Even Jabari Smith said. No pushover, and you know, take his stature for what it is because he's a hard worker. He's going to give it to you in the paint. It's he's linky. I mean, that's what it is. But I think they still got the best prospect in the draft. Granted, Banchero looked great. That was my guy coming on the draft. I think he's NBA ready. But when it, what Chet's flashing in the summer league is what a flash of what he can be and what he ultimately could grow into as he gets weight, gets the NBA shot down, gets all these other factors in. But and then the other guys, I think they're at their their potential, body wise. But I don't think Chet's even really hit that once he gets in the NBA weight room. Yep, I agree. I I, I don't want to say there's nothing to worry about. And like like you said, he'll get bullied by Embiid. Giannis is Giannis, but it's like Jokic doesn't back down as much in our division. Use of Nurkic, it's like. Really? Okay, we're not we're not really sweating him. I think Chet will be perfectly fine in the system he's in, right? We're I think we're gonna end up playing a zone defense because of how big the Thunder is now. Especially if shithead Poku plays. I, I have no hope for Poku. I hope he does well. Like I wish the dude well. I hope he I hope he turns into the star that we wanted at sixteen. But he was the best available at sixteen when we dropped. That's all there is. And he's not, in my opinion, not turning out worth anything at that position. I think the Thunder are going to have to go into, into a zone with the height that they have. Josh Giddy being 6'8", Poku being 6'10", Chet being 7'1", seven foot, seven foot Shy being 6'6", six six, Trey Mann being 6'5". Six foot, six foot it's like, man. They're... Trey Mann is 6'5". How tall is Trey Mann? Like 6'1". Trey Mann won't be on the floor anyways at like 6'5". Trey Mann's 6'5". Trey Mann is 6'5"? Yeah. You made me second guess Trey Mann, dude. He's my he's my number one prospect on the Thunder. And you got me out here to second guess Trey Mann. When did the dude grow three inches? I, after the draft. <laughs> he looks so short out there, man. He looks short because... Compared to SGA and all. I don't think SGA is 6'6". Six six. I think SGA is 6'8". I think the NBA is lying like they did with Kevin Durant for years. <laughs> the Thunder are lying, manipulating you to think that he is shorter than what he is. I think, no, I think everybody's shorter. We're going to be a, I think we're going to be a dog. I don't want to say defensively because SGA plays great defense when he wants to. Giddy is Giddy. Uh, you got Dort. Dort's going to play the three. He's going to look somebody up. Chet down low with the block machine. It's all about who plays the four. And I don't think it's Poku. I think it's probably Basley starting off the season. I don't know. I think they'll be pretty good defensively. If Basley starts, I hope this dude turns into Jeremy Grant. Like, the, to me, that's Basley's ceiling. And Jeremy Grant's a very good player. But to me, that's that's Basley's ceiling. He, everyone thought he was coming in the league going to be an elite shooter. He's averaging like 34% from three-point land. This, this last year, he did pretty good at like 38. But... I just don't. I just. I'm. I'm not. I'm not sold on Basley. I'm not sold on Poku. I personally think in free agency when it opens up, we have to go. Or it is open. We need to be making a move for a four. I think we have to. Even if it's a veteran guy, Derek Favors is definitely. I mean, you have Jamichael Green. We do have Jamichael. Oh, I like Jamichael Green. I would rather have Jeff Green than Jamichael Green. 
I think Jeff Green provides more value on defense because he's a three and D guy at the four who can stretch. And he's and he's uh, he can also be he's a very good pick and roll guy. Jeff Green is. I would I would I like Jeff Green over Jermichael, but Jeff Green is him, old. He is old. Jermichael's only twenty eight, but I think he's declining. Let's trade for Surge, yeah. I would say Surge, but I know I know the Wizards aren't sold on Chris Stapps Porzingis. I think we I think we could easily trade for Chris Stapps. Contract uh, contract sucks. This contract does suck, but we have the money. We can do it. We have we we could easily give up twenty twenty five two first round picks and be like, give us Porzingis. No, we don't year. Dude, we have we have the Euro team at OKC here. We need Porzingis on the Euro team. The Euro. <laughs> I think he'd compliment well on the Euro team in, in OKC. The Euro team. So that's where I'm at with that. So we're gonna talk a little bit of baseball, and I didn't make a caption for this because I didn't. I didn't even think about it until now. Are the Los Angeles Angels gonna ship Mike Trout out, Mike Trout out of town? Will they know? Should they? Probably. I mean, get your value wise there. Um, but you have arguably two of the top five players in baseball on your team. What the hell is wrong in Los Angeles? I don't know. They they signed Noah Syndergaard. Underperforming. It's just I'm gonna read I'm gonna read through the pitching because to me these are their starters: Shohei, Ace, Patrick Sandoval. Okay, Noah Syndergaard yeah. used to be used to be an ace. Now he's now he's now he's a mid-level pitcher. He's I don't even consider Syndergaard as a starter anymore. Jose Suarez, he's all right. Uh, Michael Lorenz, Loren, Lorenzen, Lorenzen, he's on IL. It's like they're the high point of Angels pitching is Shohei and Iglesias. Other than that, pitching is pitching is bad across the board it's not they can't ever get pitching they can't and i don't i don't know who doesn't want to go play with shohei otani and mike trout in los angeles i don't they got noah Syndergaard, who's a very good guy from the mets when healthy he was pit the dude pitches 102 miles per hour and he's accurate as fuck he's a very good pitcher but he shows up to the angels goes on injury prone comes back he's four and two this year but he has a 2.96 era and he can't pitch a full game he's having he's struggling pitching full games his his six his six games that he's technically played enough to get a win or a loss column those that's it the dude's pitched like 30 games this year and that's he's only finished he's five and seven <laughs> five and seven sorry the issue with them angels most of the time is not offense it's pitching and you see if Sir Salver trial goes five for five with two home runs, two doubles, and a bunch of, you know, and Shohei goes three for four with the home run and all this for you guys, and they lose 11 to six. And you're like, what the fuck? How does that happen? It's your pitching. Your pitching always gives it up. Well, this year, it's offense. This year, they uh, they have no offensive firepower besides Trout and Otani. Taylor Ward, oh, Ward. Came, off, mm-hmm. came off the year absolutely hot. Got injured. Ain't good. Not, not, not nearly doing what he used to. He's still he's hurt. 290, 292. Well, he's back now. Yeah, but yeah. He's had four, four hits in his last twenty-two plate appearances. I think the better four. question is: Is if Trout gets traded, where does he go? Uh, unfortunately, New York. So I told you. I told you the Yankees are. They have the farm. They have the team to do it, and they have the salary cap, and the money. They probably give you the best deal because the Yankees should probably give you Jason Dominguez. They probably give Estrada picks. I mean, they have the they have the prospects. They have the farm to get Mike Trout from the, the Angels. I mean, Boston, Boston, you don't really need an infield, so you could give up Downs, you could give up uh, Mayer, who's an extremely talented prospect. You had technically have the money, but is Boston willing to spend? I mean, they just let an AVP walk out the door a couple years ago. Yeah. 
I'm trying to see what trade rumors, like what potential trades could be out there. The Mike, the Mike Trout trades are just. It's pretty much giving up a farm and a, and a couple star players or veteran players. I don't know, dude. I it feel like. Would it be good? Absolutely, in my opinion. I think we have to see Mike Trout leave. Like, this dude is arguably the greatest base or the most talented baseball player anyone's ever seen since King Griffey Jr. And he's stuck on a yes. shit. Yeah, he's stuck on a shit team with the Angels, who he's never made a playoff appearance with in his 10 seasons with them. Get. Mike Trout has to get off that roster. The fact that he signed that contract with them showed loyalty and hit, they were the team willing to offer him the absolute most amount of money. But no. the Yankees, I bet... Were be Another team would have gave him that. Yeah. Oh, I I feel like they would have. I don't know. I, I'm... But if you give up Trout, you have to give up Otani. That's just how it goes. Because you can't give up one giving up the other because then there's no point but where 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 would otani go oh well he is two-way so every team needs an ace and every team needs a left-handed bit, uh, bat to come out uh, you know whenever he's not pitching so he could go into all the different 29 teams it doesn't matter i feel like trout would 29 teams would throw in an offer for trout 29 teams throwing an offer for otani yeah, I mean, come on, baby. <laughs> come on, Sox. Give up That's the farm for you. Trout. We gave up. We let Mookie Betts go, arguably the top three best player in baseball, just gone. At the time, he was the base, the best player in baseball. Mm, probably still Trout, but number two. Yeah, well, Trout's always number one. But <laughs> Trout on pedestal, top pedestal will never be bumped off. These other guys are just playing, right? It was like that year. It was Mookie, it was Mookie, Yelich, and Baez were like the top three guys in the league besides Trout that year in 2018. Pretty close. Yeah. So, man, I just don't know. I don't know what's going on with baseball. the The Angels were red hot, looking like they were primed for a playoff run. And now they're just. Hey, you got the All Star break. Uh, the home run derby is next Monday. Yep, Albert Pujols competing in the All in the uh, home run derby. So that's. That's okay. Well, it's actually a very big. It's a loaded home run derby uh, so far. It's loaded. It's going to be a good one. Other than Albert, because I doubt he gets even ten. He could probably. I don't know. But. Who? Albert. I bet Oliver Pujols smashes the home run, do we? The Derby. He's not going to be Big Me Pete, though. No, Pete Alonzo was built for the home run Derby, dude. <laughs> that dude is just absolutely designed. They may lose it this year. I don't think so. I mean, you got yeah. Pete, Acuna, Juan Soto, Jose Ramirez. Julio Rodriguez. I like Jose in this one. I mean, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of bats in there this year. There's a lot of bats. There's Bryce. Schwarty. Bryce. Is Bryce Schwarty? And these again? Wait, his thumbs broke. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he got fucked over. I forgot. Yeah, Schwarber's in there. Mm-hmm. Who's the Mariners guy? Julio Rodriguez, all-star rookie. All-star rookie, okay. I don't know. Pete, to me, Pete Alonso is literally his his frame, his body, his mentality is designed for the home run derby. But I I weirdly like Jose Ramirez, or not weirdly. I think he's kind of a favorite. Jose Ramirez, or even Schwarber. In this Schwarber, game. dude. Schwarber could win it. He's the NL home run leader right now. I, I put money on Schwarber. At Dodger Stadium, which is a pitcher-friendly park, but so there's no like right favorite there. Can't really like, yeah. hey, there's a short porch and left, hey, there's a short porch and right. So, 
it, it's pretty hard both ways. Why isn't Judge competing in this? There's still like one or two spots he could hop in. I would I would like to see Aaron Judge and Raphael Devers hop in here. Ooh, or even Austin, Austin, Riley, Austin Riley. That way you get teammates competing against Acuna. But I, don't know. I feel like Giancarlo Stanton would absolutely dominate a home run derby. I might be wrong, but he's one of those guys that just I feel like Vlad Guerrero is not competing. He might get in if there's a couple spots left. No, he says he's not good at this year. What? What clowns, dude? Corey Seager needs to compete in it. He needs he needs a little bit of pull this like a little bit of camera FaceTime being down there with the uh Well yesterday hey yesterday Corey Seager has he's on a five home run game straight or five Yeah, he's hit five he hit a home run in five straight games. Really? So he's catching a little fire down there in uh Arlington, Texas. Well, he's got an RBI today. No home run. So far. All right. He's destined to crank. It's probably going to happen. But that's all I got tonight. Unless you got anything else? Not really. A better, a better placed... A ten thousand dollar bet on the Sacramento Kings winning the twenty twenty three NBA championship bet will pay off seven point five million dollars. He just burned his money. The open starts tomorrow. Yeah, whatever. Tiger, Tiger came. I'm tuning in. I'm tuning in. I won't watch. It's not. I like. I don't know. This is Tiger's favorite course. Yeah, and he's gonna stink. Watch your mouth, dude. It's, when you're talking about greatness, I'm the only person that thinks Tiger is is done. Like he needs, he literally needs to hang him up. He's done. Tiger's still the pole on the PGA. He's done. He's never. He's never gonna win a major. It doesn't matter. It's greatness walking on a golf course still. Like he, like just appreciate it while and still. Jack, the and Jack Nichols. Only Nicholas right, only shows up right, to tee off to tee off on the third hole, and then he's done. That's greatness mm -hmm. walking on the course. That's all Tiger needs to do. He needs to show up and tee off with the seniors. No, I think he's got one more major aim. I don't see it. After after the uh, the PGA Championship, hit hitting a couple shots, hold, literally falling on his knees, holding his back. Because that car crash fucked him up so bad, I, I just that was like his first. That was his first fucking round of professional golf since like the car crash, dude. Give him some rehab. I, just, I don't think, I don't think he's in it. I, just, I don't think his body can hold up to play that long. I mean, you're talking well, about eighteen, he, holes. He does, 18 holes, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, then he turns to John Daly around, and gets a car. It's not that big a deal. Or he just takes the live route and only plays fifty four holes. Got done trash and live on I television. Like so. trash and live. But I'm telling you, dude, when he, if he sucks it up for another two two years and live golf is still going strong by then, Tiger will be in live golf. No way. Tiger wouldn't tarnish his legacy like that. Is it tarnishing? I think he's tarnishing his legacy now. No, because ninety five percent of golf fans still want to see Tiger. They still want to see him get on the course. They still want to see Tiger Woods compete, and they want to see him win a major. That's not tarnishing the legacy. That's doing it, dude. That's doing it for the fans. That's trying to get you one more. If Tiger could succeeds in winning that one more, if he succeeds, he won his it'll be his more. greatest. He it'll be his greatest won. accomplishment right here. His greatest accomplishment was winning one in twenty nineteen when he won the Masters. Yeah, he yeah. To this point, to this point, that's his accomplishment. As, as he was going up, getting that green jacket, he should have done a retirement speech. Absolutely not. He's still the biggest pull in golf. I'm telling. He's still the guy in golf to this day. He is with Tiger. I agree. Of course, he's there's two the people following him. Draw in golf, but it's like, can you can you be the biggest draw and still be successful? No. 
he can't he can't anymore he used to like when tiger when i was younger it was all about tiger woods tiger woods tiger woods now it's about these other guys coming in the league you you want you want to see play and i i've personally since tiger's not been great have become disinterested in watching golf yeah you watch I, golf I, you watch i need the next stop and hope that tiger tracked the clock one time man not he did in 2019 you still hope if you're a golf fan you still hope that was tiger's fairy tale ending was 2019 he should have hung him up after 2019 mm, no put, not put him put i would have framed those clubs and put them at whatever course i he won at i don't know vance come see me tomorrow <laughs> Are we, is this is like fighting words, Kyle? <laughs> Crashing tigers so much? I don't know. Hey, yeah, you know, just just greatness like that, Vince. Look, I I loved Tiger growing up, and I was a huge Tiger Woods fan. I tuned into a lot of golf growing up, and it was partially because my dad was a Tiger fan. Because, and I was just like, you wanted to see Tiger on TV, but now it's like, I don't want to see Tiger hold his back. I don't want to see Tiger shank it off in the woods for the 18th time. I. His legacy is going downhill. It's it's the same with WWE. I don't want to see Rey Mysterio in the ring anymore. He's tarnishing. <laughs> at this point. Rey Mysterio will go down as one of the top fifteen wrestlers of all time, but he has to hang him up within the next year. Yeah, that's that. I like that one. But but if you're gonna watch one more, if you're gonna watch one more PGA event, this is it. I don't watch wrestling to hope that Rey Mysterio gets one more championship. Well, he's never going to. He's not that guy. Neither is Tiger. He's not the guy anymore. Tiger is the guy. Oh, dude, Tiger's oh, he's so. Look, if Tiger gets one, I'm I'm all wrong, and I will come on here and I will <laughs> I will admit I will admit to everybody who tunes in, I'm wrong. Tiger's the goat, which he's still in my. He's already the goat. He is the goat, but he's tarnishing his legacy at this point. He needs to hang him up. He needs to move on. He can play. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Tiger roll up in a couple events a year, you know, like maybe some of the smaller, bigger events just to draw to get them on TV and build a more crowd. But I don't know. I just – I don't think he has these big events in him. Like what we have the – is it the U.S. Open or is this just the Open? The Open. Yeah. I, I it's at, it's at, it, I'm just saying this is – one to watch out for. It's Tiger's favorite course. He's been prepping all this time for this. He skipped the U.S. Open for this. He's been taking Adderall and Advil for his back. Not Adderall, but Advil. Advil and Ali for his back. Whatever can get him through the holes, dude. Whatever can get him through. I don't know. I wish Tiger the best. I really do. But I, I, I think he's, he's on Rey Mysterio decline right now. It's he's, it's like you still like to watch him compete, but you know he's you know he's not going to win anything. It's just like it's a nostalgia thing. I would rather see Ray Mysterio completely retire than see him. So you're talking continue, continue to wrestle. Same with Tiger. I would rather see him retire and go out as the goat, the greatest player ever. Won his last championship in 2019, just three years ago. It's like now he's going to continue to play till like 2030, not win a major this whole time till then. And then it's just like when, when Tiger retires, you're going to see everywhere. ESPN, that one sports podcast, Sports Center, everywhere. Yeah, I just threw this in that category. Everywhere. Was Tiger really the GOAT of his whole career? Or was he just the GOAT of the, of the 1990s and the 2000s? It's there we're, we're, not, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna talk about Tiger if he retires in twenty thirty the way we are, the way we'll talk about Tiger now. Absolutely we will, dude. No, absolutely not. Tiger had that stretch of golf where he was the best in the world. He was the best athlete in the world, he's the best to do it. The motherfucker was on Wheaties box. Okay? Back when we being on Wheaties box was top tier. He was the Wheaties box. Box of Wheaties because motherfucking Tiger had the red polo on. It was fucking giving it the thump, okay? You bought that's why you bought that box of Wheaties. 
I don't know. I s He's sticking around the league too long. Kind of like Vince You're Carter talking. Well. See, like, if I just listened to your side of the conversation and didn't hear a name, I think you're talking about fucking John Daly or something. I, I wish John Daly would hang it up too. Like, he's entertaining as fuck to watch, and he's, he's a crowd draw, but he's not winning anything. He's just. John Daly literally rolls up because he's like, I just want to fucking smoke cigarettes and drink Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> And he's like, and I get paid to play. Well, he didn't get paid. If he goes to live golf, I get paid. But he's like, I show up to the event, get cut after day three, and then I'm sitting at home. He's like, I just love golf. He said, I don't work on weekends. Yeah. I don't work on weekends. <laughs> I work on weekends and Friday. Love John Daly. Casino money. John Daly, he's he's a comedy act in golf right now. All right, but hey. It's, look, wor it's it, working for him. Where it Tiger is. Who does? Who does? Where Tiger is still in the league saying i can compete and win you don't hear john daly rolling up saying like i'm gonna fucking roll in here and win this and win this course john daly because tiger says a dog he's not he has a dog but he's not a dog that's because tiger is one of the greatest to ever do it dude he's not no john daly and he should hang him up now so we can talk we can continue to talk great about tiger woods and the road you're still gonna call him the goat i don't know if if rory keeps on JT keeps on as we, we may not be calling Tiger the goat. Listen, we Justin Thomas only has two major wins. Justin no Thomas, two major wins. Let's put the brakes. No one calls Jack Nicholas Jack Nicholas the goat anymore. And he's the he's the fucking silhouette for golf. No one calls him the goat anymore. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not like the NBA guy is the fucking you know goat. Why, you know why we don't call Jack Nicholas the goat anymore? Because Tiger showed up and Jack Nicholas retired way too late. Look, and Rory showed up and took the field by storm whenever Tiger was in his slump. Did we call start calling Rory the goat and forget about? They did at the Tiger, time. No. Rory was the greatest golfer ever when he came in and steamrolled like six majors right out the gate. He, I don't know if anybody's calling him the goat. I, I, they must. I forgot about that young blood killer, Tiger Woods. The only person that's going to dethrone Tiger Woods is Charlie Woods. That might be true. That might be true. But I don't want to... Uh, I just... I can't... I cannot continue to watch Tiger in this state of decline. Yeah, it sucks seeing him whenever he's on like... day th When he makes the cut in day three, he's holding his back with a limp. Well, he needs to yeah, he took time. Took some time. We'll, we'll see. Let's just see. He Let's just see. Masters. He won the Masters. That's one of the big. That's one of the big guys, right? That was his fourth Masters. That was one of the biggest championships you can win in the PGA. In 2019, at like 45 something years old, it's like, hang him up, Tiger. That was the perfect time. That was, you mm -hmm. came in favorite for that masters you came in and absolutely dominated the masters the only day you gave up your lead that day was day two and then you took it back over day three and didn't give it up that was tiger's crowning moment not saying his crowning achievement but that was his crowning moment of his career he should have he should have hung up the golf clubs put them in the storage case right there at that course hung Put the jacket on, Tiger out, dropped the mic, walked away. And then showed up, and then would show up at Augusta and tee off on hole three and just give the crowd a wave, give the crowd a wave like Jack Nicholas does, and walk out of there. And everyone everyone be sitting there, ooh, ah, the goat, the goat. Oh, look at that, man. He's going. And now we're just like, do we want to see Wash John Cena step in the ring again? No, we don't yes. want to see Tiger Woods step on the course again. Everybody wants to see John Cena get back in the ring. Okay, well, John Cena hasn't won a, a championship since, like, 2017 when he beat AJ Styles. And he's due for one more because John Cena can literally be past Ric Flair. But you don't want to see John Cena fight a top dog to win that I don't know. He's not, he's not going to put on an entertaining match. I think he's got one more. It's like, like he does have one more championship, and he will get it. But it's no, not Tiger. Be, it's not. It's not going to be an entertaining match. I'm talking about Tiger. Tiger has. 
Tiger has Thursday and Friday on him. He needs to start <laughs> pounding beers, smoking cigarettes, and eating peanut M and M's, and turn into a John Daly. Mm. Because that's that's all he is at this point. So, man, we'll see. Your course coming up. Yeah. All right. That's all we got for you guys tonight. We'll see. Rooting for Tiger. Place your bets if you're a Tiger fan. I'm placing bets for Tiger to retire. Poor Tiger. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to that one sports podcast. This is a podcast for the fans, from the fans. We're going to hear from you guys, the fans. I'll, I'll say this again like I say it all the time. If you guys ever want to be on the show, ever just want to shoot us a message, let us know. We'll gladly have you on. We want to hear from you guys, the fans. If you're, you want to talk about NFL, NBA, MLB, golf, we'll talk golf. We'll talk it all. Uh, if you want to talk hockey, we'll figure it. We'll figure it the fuck out. We'll do some research. Let us know a day or two before. But you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. As always, that one sports podcast on Facebook. Have a great evening and a great weekend.